it's not your money. That's what I tell myself every single time I want to spend money on something. I don't end up doing it. And this weird little trick that I learned that I put in my business has changed my finances and helped me become impeccably organized. I grew up totally poor and scared and I don't ever want to go back to that place ever again. So I really, really hope this serves you. What's up? I'm Keith Kelfus and I talk about how to go from zero to 100K in your landscaping business. This video applies to all small business owners, so check it out. I'm going to talk about why I have 17 bank accounts and how this has really helped me. Now, uh, I'm going to spare you the details of how to get all this started, but I do want to say if you've just started your small business or you're about to start it, I want to acknowledge you and congratulate you. That's awesome. Okay, so you got a small business checking account. Well, you want to have a small business savings account and then a payroll account, okay? Three accounts, two checking, one savings. So you take 30% of all gross profits. Every single time you cash checks and collect credit cards and the money is always coming to the small business checking account, you want to continuously, whether you do it like per transaction, insane, per week, okay. Uh, that's what I do every single week. And then you figure out what 30% of all the gross profits are and you transfer that into, a, into the savings account and you just keep putting money in the savings account for taxes, right? So 30% of all gross profits goes into the savings account for taxes and that money never ever comes out. It's not your money, you can't touch it, right? I don't care if you got 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 grand in there, it doesn't matter, you can't touch it. Now every single quarter, you're paying your quarterly taxes, you're paying payroll taxes, you're paying year end taxes, lots of taxes. This next account here is a payroll account. So go out, go and open up another checking account. Some people have multiple, like a payroll account, an operating expenses account, an advertising account. This is awesome because if you had all this money just in one business checking account, it can kind of like all gob together and you'll think you have more money than you actually have. And I don't like that feeling. Okay, so checking, savings, payroll. How much money do you put in the payroll account? Depends on if it's just you or if you have employees, but you want to make sure there's money that you attach a payroll company or you run your own payroll out of that account. Or you can run distributions out of it, whatever you do. That's how you pay yourself. Now, uh, I got two businesses, they're two totally separate businesses, so I have three accounts for the other business that are exactly the same. A checking, a savings, and then a payroll account, okay? Actually, um, that was an operating expenses account, and we're growing that account right now because we're growing that business. But over here is the personal side, right? You should never commingle the funds like your personal and business expenses. Keep them separate in separate accounts, and it makes it easier at tax time as well, right? But uh, you got your personal checking and savings now. So your personal checking account, you can pay all your bills out of that. You might have a joint checking account if you're married, right? And so you have a personal savings account as well. So every single time you take money out of the business, whether you're paying taxes through payroll or you're taking distributions and then paying taxes later, because if you're not paying taxes here, you either pay now or pay later, right? But you're getting taxed on it as personal income but you should always be putting a specific percentage of money that comes into your personal into your savings. Now, if you're like, I can't afford to do any of this, this is insane. Well, good. Now that you've become aware of it, you have to, uh, I'm not telling you what to do, I'm just saying what I had to do is figure out how to hustle my tail off and figure out how to make more money because this all became a non-negotiable uh, to the point where I was willing to do anything to get this organized because I couldn't sleep at night until I figured out how to get the money thing organized because money is like oxygen. You literally can't breathe and you will suffocate without it. It's just a fact, at least in this reality that we live in, right? But I have heard that there, <laughs> in the Andromedan galaxy there are aliens that are 1.5 million years advanced that they don't even need money. I don't know, maybe the Hopi Indians didn't either, but I got off track, man. <laughs> All right, so there's another account called the Home Repair Savings Account. Every single week I put away 50 bucks into the Home Repair Savings Account and until it hits five grand and I'll probably stop. I got it up to like 4,500 bucks and then our washing machine blew up and then our microwave blew up and every single time we need something around the house or something breaks or we just, we're getting a new screen door installed in the back, it just comes out of that account. So I'm always building that account with 50 bucks a week, but that's not my money either. I can't go shopping with the Home Repair Savings Account. That's not my money. Right? Just like the tax account ain't my money. So when you have multiple accounts for multiple reasons, it's not your money, you can't touch it. Now, I have another account called the winter savings account. Right here. Every single week, when I'm running payroll and doing distributions, 
and talking to my bookkeeper, which is Dan Plata at Blue Sky Services. They're the bookkeepers. If you need help with bookkeeping, I'll put a link below. Uh, blueskies.com, yourblueskies.com slash Kelfis. You'll save like, it's only a couple hundred bucks with the sign up if you need a bookkeeper. It's dope. I figure out how much money do I need to survive through the winter. I'm in Michigan, freezing winter, no landscaping going on. Um, and I quit plowing snow a little while back. I'll make a whole video about that. Let me know in the comments below if you want to learn why I quit plowing snow. Because I did it for 15 years. But anyways, so I'd be like, okay, so if our monthly nut in the house is six grand a month to live totally cushy in Michigan, what's six times uh, December, January, February, March? Four, that's $24,000. So we need 24K saved up for the winter plus all the taxes that are going to be due. I don't know, what's, what's the taxes? Let's say 20 grand in taxes. After paying all the quarterly uh, taxes and all the payroll taxes, I'm just saying like 20K. That's 44K, right? Now what's going to happen? At the end of uh, the winter, you're broke. That's not even enough money to get the, the season started again. You probably need at least another 6K to get the season going again. Okay, now we're at 50K, right? And oh, well, what about payroll? Are you, you're not going to be able to pay anybody, so you're probably going to have to have, I don't know how many employees you have or if it's just you. Let's say you need 5K. That's 5K in the payroll count. So that's 55k okay but, but then quarterly taxes are due right away plus a year-end taxes they're just all piling up quick okay here we're gonna need I don't know what do you need another 5k in the tax account so you're at 60k okay but oh all the insurance policies are renewing so you need another two grand to renew the insurance policies up oh, now you're at 62k Oh, all your household expenses. You, you didn't make no money all winter unless you plowed some. I don't know what you did if you're in the landscape business. So you need another six grand. Getting out of the hole and to pay your bills so you don't you survive 62. You're at 67K. Okay. Then all of a sudden, the dishwasher blows up. It's a thousand bucks. 68K. Then the motor blows up on your truck, or they're like, dude, $68,000 just makes you survive. You, you might be mad watching this right now if you've only got 2,500 bucks in the bank. But I, what I'm, I'm imploring you, I'm begging you to listen to me right now. I'm so passionate about this. I always thought, oh, if I had 10 grand, it would save me 20. If I had 30 grand, it would save me. Think about this. There is another account I have called the, uh, it's an investment account, and I've been away 100 bucks a week for the investment account. I talked to my wife about this. She can't wait till we can just start investing in real estate and doing Airbnbs, all this. I've wanted to do this. I was talking about this in a video like three years ago. So I started putting away, I opened up another bank account, an investment account so we can invest in real estate. And I started putting, I, I opened it with a hundred bucks and I started putting 20 bucks a week in there. Then I got to 25, then 50, now a hundred bucks. And I'm up to like $4,300 in this little account. And once it gets to the point, like literally, I was talking to somebody, uh, cause we're, we're getting like a life insurance, started a SEP IRA, doing all these responsible things financially, okay? And they were trying to sell me some uh, universal health insurance policy, which I wanna get. And they're like, okay, well, not only do you have this life insurance policy, but you gotta get this universal, listen to me, this is important this universal life insurance policy, can you put 200 bucks a month away for that? I said, hmm, well, uh, right now, at this is a little crazy, at the rate I'm saving to invest in my first investment, uh, residential investment property, I'm looking at about nine years till I can afford the down payment, minus the inflation. So if I invest $200 a month in this universal life insurance policy, that money can't come out of all this 14 bank accounts, right? 
because all this money is all taken for, spoken for. This, none of the, did I ever, out of any of this, ever say, oh, we're getting a fun house up north, and then we're getting a vacation property, we're getting an RV, and I'm buying a jet ski and a dirt bike and a snowmobile, and I'm getting, I'm fucking, <laughs> no. The, when you look at money this way, so anyways, at that rate, it would push it out to like 12.5 years before I could get this investment property. Money is tight. But wait a second. You're like, you got over a hundred grand in the bank, dog. We go shopping. No, I don't. It's really tight right now. When you're impeccably organized with it and every single thing has a specific place. So, I think if you have a very specific account, like a play account, this account is for blowing money. I actually need to go open this account. Once that account hits your enough money to go buy some, um, man, I'm fucking telling you what to do, bro. I just like, I'm trying to be so disciplined financially that when somebody asks you how much money you got in the bank, dog, you're like, oh, 50 grand, 100 grand. Whoa, you got 50 grand in the bank. <gasps> wow, we can go to Disney World. We could do your first car. We could end up broke. You could end up broke if you don't watch every penny. <sighs> you know what? I always wondered why. I'm not gonna say their names, but I got a couple friends who are ballin'. They got multiple seven-figure businesses, and these motherfuckers won't come off a nickel. They literally are bitching about nickels. And I'm scratching my head going, why does this guy who has a multi-million dollar business, why is he so stingy over nickels? Because everything is already been pre-allocated. Dude, I'm done.